So friends, welcome to Data Pandit. Uh, let's talk about uh, resource management. How resource management is happens in conduct IT or in ab initio uh, conduct IT basically. So what is the resource management? So as we as we do the things in parallel in graphs, right? In best graphs, so we we run the the process in parallel uh, using the data parallelism or a pipeline parallelism or a component parallelism. So uh, using uh, so in, in in those lines we have um, parallel things running in uh, in plants as well. So we can uh, achieve that things in uh, many ways. So we can uh, we can have our control flow like we have a you know concurrent looping plan that also is kind of you know parallel mechanism in some way. And uh, we can create the, the you know independent flows in in one of the plan which are executed in sequence and in, in simultaneously basically one branch is executing and also the lower branch is also getting executed. So that 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 we really depends upon the 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 control is depend if the piece of work is getting uh, is dependent upon each other then the the the, the structure is happens like that. So but if what if we want to control the the parallelism or uh, the the parallel things which is happening parallel so there are three uh, there are kind of uh, use cases right so what happens is if you try to you know we are creating some uh, so many files as part of some plan and and we are uh, pushing those files on some network okay maybe ftp or some other ways or probably uh, you know uh, the database files and something like that. So if we are posting those files and uh, there are many things, there are many jobs which are doing the same thing. So what we can do is we can we could limit the, the, the this congestion now on the network because uh, because if we are if we are doing many things in parallel and but our resource is not responding appropriately, then this is going to take more time than it happens in sequence. Like we have a task A and task B. If we like we have task N. So if the N task is running in parallel, and because every every task is going to be, you know, asking for the resource which it requires, and the resource are not there, then uh, because uh, the resource are not there, then you know the the it's going to be a more time consuming process than if we are running a things in sequence right so 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 while understanding that 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 thing right we we construct or we design our plan uh, accordingly so one could be the, the we can limit the parallel processing and then parallel db load if the data service server has a limited power sometimes what happens is uh, only on the database servers are you know or the tables in specific are such tables are there in, in you know depending upon the domain and depending upon the on the use cases that they are accepting only one you know one connection at a time so in those circumstances what we can do is with the that we can limit the data load process we can create the resource and we can assign that resource to a particular task Okay, if that task succeeds, then only that resource is getting released, and the another task is getting control of that resource or that connection, right? So, and there are too many jobs in the host. So, if 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 the if the host is you know overpopulated, using uh, overpopulated, uh, you know, of the of the jobs running on that host, right? So, in that case, is the, the we have to limit the 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 actual know parallelism basically so this is the resource management basically so the the conduct it uh, tries to give uh, you know options to managing the re resource in better way okay as in so how we can create the resource okay so we have a you know the toolbox okay for the resource so in the resource there are resource tool manager and there is a resource group entries okay we can create the pool and we can assign that pool into the resource group okay so so and when we so let's look at the picture basically so so this is the tool and we have a 
two options right resource pool manager and monitoring the resource in the gde toolbar and uh, every operations can be done using the plan admin command basically creating the resources and uh, you know uh, creating the pools and uh, and monitoring the resources within that resource server okay so there is a resource server which which controls the uh, allocation of the resources for a particular task and the allocation and depending upon the availability okay there is a resource server allocation so the configuration of the resources uh, has to happen okay so so if so how to assign the particular resource to the task so let's say we have created the resource, so resource okay and we have a pool name and the resource name and the number of units so go to the task and uh, if you go to the property then there is a you know resource tab and within that there is a option of adding deleting and you know amending the resource allocation okay so we can add that resource you know and it will ask for the resource name where is the resource so dot pool is the uh, dot pool uh, dot pool <coughs> object is the is actually the pool name so within that pool there is there is a resource name which is maybe of ftp or cp or any depending upon our uh, our use cases and then if you are assigning two units for this task so it will be asking for two units of uh, this cpu cycle okay and then there is a top priority so there are low low priority high priority and you know normal priority so depending so if, the, if the, there are two tasks which are you know competing for the same resource and one is being the highest priority and another one is normal priority then the task which is has have the high high priority will be executed first okay will be allocated first the, that particular resource okay so this is how you know we can create and we can assign the resource so when any whenever any failure happens so how the resource will be allocated i mean we retrieved and allocated so if any failure happens then uh, the process is not going to you know resume from the resource allocation so let's say any you know there are two tasks which are running and one task has the resource you know allocated resource and it failed so that the, the task the resource is getting released right at that point in time so resource server is going to allocate the, that resource to any animal else which is waiting anyone else task which is waiting so if it, if we are trying to re restart the process then you know that resource may not be you know available at that point in time so this is happens whenever any a failure happens so there are concerns and issues basically so if we have you know the the process is asking for five resources let's say and um, we have you know resources like 2 and 3 available you know in one one host there are two server uh, two uh, units are available and then uh, next is you know three available then because the allocation is not going to happen so allocation is going to happen in at one shot okay so this is one one concern basically so this will, will may you know uh, left the resource uh, unutilized you know in number of ways so the, so on top of that we have created the you know resource group we have created the pools and you know we have allocated the resources to the particular task on top of that there is a resource server so when the resource server is you know come into we can we can start the resource server you know as and when required using the plan admin command okay we can stop it okay but uh, basically whenever any task executes and it asking for any resource then you know the resource server is going to be automatically uh, come into action okay so this is the resource server is the is the is the, uh, is the basic is the important uh, part here so how to uh, manage uh, how to you know create those resources you know because these are the, so whatever we have learned as of up till now is a logical thing and how physically it happens we have to create the you know we have to allocate those resources basically to the resource server and resource server has to know you know what resources are there and you know how these resources are going to be allocated so this the configuration we are going to understand in a part 2 basically and many times there is a deadlock happens uh, so what happens is uh, so many uh, multiple processes 
are waiting for uh, resources right so uh, so this is uh, the way this is the deadlock which happens in database transaction right similarly the deadlock is happening so the the two processes let's say process p1 is using the resource r1 and it is the waiting for resource r2 and there is a process p p2 which is using the resource r2 and it is waiting for resource r1 so um you know okay so so the resource r1 because it's used by p1 okay so this is not getting released and it's waiting for it and as soon as it uh, so so this is also you know waiting for r2 and r2 is getting used by this so this is kind of you know deadlock process so the the, the processes are you know using the resources and the 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 to succeed because p1 is going to succeed on if and only r1 and r2 happens right and r2 cannot happen because because this p2 is not going to be succeeded until r it gets r1 right so in those this is kind of deadlock situation in in the resource management right so these these things we need to take care while while designing the whole process okay this is that and thank you so much please subscribe my channel okay we are going to understand the the physical things uh, which how to resource server is going to be a play a key role while allocation of the physical allocation of the resources thank you so much